Jackie Lacey. Uh, basically, there's a lot of talk concerning her uh, at this point in time, uh, basically due to the fact that she has literally been uh, missing in action in terms of her voice and actions uh, as it relates to a lot of incidents that had happened uh, in our community with the killings and, and brutality of uh, the LAPD, uh, highway patrolmen. Uh, we feel that Jackie Lacey has not uh, uh, came to the forefront and addressed those issues. So we're going to discuss her non-action as well as uh, our thoughts on how to proceed forward in illuminating her and not uh, uh, coming to the forefront. Jackie Lacey is the uh, district attorney of the city of LA. She has the largest uh, district attorney's office in the country. Uh, she has approximately 1,000 lawyers, uh, 300 uh, investigators, and uh, 800 uh, support staff. Uh, again, she has the largest uh, staff of that kind in the country. She's been with the district attorney's office for 32 years. She started out as a deputy district attorney. So she is ingrained in the ways, in the uh, manner of doing things of the district attorney's office. On March the 1st of last year, which was 2015, uh, one of our dear members of our community who goes by the name of Africa, his actual name is Charlie Lindu Kunang, was killed by the LAPD uh, for no apparent reason other than just being homeless. And, uh, but in that incident, there was another victim, and her name is Trishan Carey. Uh, mm -hmm. She literally picked up a policeman's baton that was dropped by a police officer as she was frightened by the numerous uh, police officers that surrounded uh, Brother Africa's tent. And uh, she picked up the baton. Uh, didn't make a move with the baton, but uh, she was uh, surrounded by police officers who literally took her down physically. And she was charged with felony resisting arrest and felony assault on police officer. That video has gone viral, and it has been seen by approximately a million people throughout the country and throughout the world. And on that video, video it clearly shows uh, that those charges that she was uh, charged with are bogus charges. Now, having said that, uh, Jackie Lacey in her office has literally been held bent on prosecuting Trishan Carey. She is a lady of this community as well who suffers from a mental illness. It is documented. Uh, Jackie Lacey has not been forthright, uh, and not even been willing to drop the charges. So Trishan sits in jail at, uh, to this point, uh, looking at the uh, longest in the prison time. She actually picked up the baton, but she didn't make a, a threatening move towards any of the officers. And, and how she was charged with felony resisting arrest and also felony assault on a police officer is beyond belief. Uh, and, and one other uh, nugget to this whole story, Jackie Lacey recently rolled out uh, a program approximately four to six months ago called a mental health diversion program. And what this, the, the nexus and the basis of this program is that uh, those suffering with mental illnesses uh, will be diverted away from jails and prisons. But one caveat to this program is that in order to be eligible for mental health diversion, you must first enter the criminal justice system, thus uh, still criminalizing the mentally ill. Uh, we say that as egregious and reprehensible and as opposed to continually criminalizing the mental ill, we call for Jackie Lacey and other entities to uh, call on monies being spent for mental health issues as opposed to uh, jails and prisons being uh, the final destination. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is sad that all we can do is continue to criminalize the mental ill as opposed to getting them help from mental health specialists. There's been a myriad of those such cases, <clears throat> and I'll just name a few. Uh, of course, Brother Africa, but then you have Ezell Ford. Uh, you have Brenda Glenn, who was killed by police in uh, Venice Beach. Uh, Omar Abrego, and, and another dear brother of ours who lived on Skid Row as well as uh, Brother Ocaño. Uh, Lisa Thomas, who was uh, uh, literally killed by Officer Callahan. Uh, and there's, there's so many other cases. And in none of these cases has Jackie Lacey weighed in on. Uh, even after the police commission, headed by Paula Madison, who is no longer with the Comit Police Commission, came back with a report concerning EZL4 that said that the two officers, Charlton Wampler and Antonio Villegas, were in out of policy uh, on, for Wampler on three counts and Villegas on one. Uh, Wampler, 
the actual stop of uh, Ezel Ford, the pulling of his weapon and the discharge of his weapon, and uh, Villegas on the discharge of his weapon. Ezel Ford was shot three times, two times in the back, one time at very close range, for he had the gun imprint on his back. Uh, even though the police commission came back and said that these officers were out of policy, <coughs> Jackie Lacey refused to prosecute them. Uh, in the, in the uh, event of uh, Alicia Thomas, who was in the, a police cruiser with her hands handcuffed behind her back, Officer Callahan kicked her three times, which was also on video. Uh, it came back that she was only charged with simple assault. Uh, after the coroner came back and said that she was actually murdered by, by Officer Callahan. Jackie Lacey refused to uh, enhance the charges to, to murder. And uh, matter of fact, Officer Callahan, I think, only spent it's going to spend from three to six months in, in jail. Uh, we again say that her lack of weighing in on these issues tends to continue to show the disrespect, disregard, and disdain that she has for this community and definitely for individuals of African descent in this country. And we're calling on Jackie Lacey today to stand up and be counted for. We're calling on her to con not con to continue to be missing in action, to do her job uh, as her job description warrants. Uh, in the mission statement of the district attorney's office, they say that, that they're literally there to uh, prosecute individuals of, of wrongdoing. And that means uh, public individuals as well as police officials as well. And we haven't seen that done uh, to this date. Uh, not one case while she has been district attorney has been prosecuted as it relates to police officers. And there's been many, many cases. As a matter of fact, on last year, 2015, the LAPD was the most violent police force in this country, killing 21 individuals and in, in, in shooting many, many others. Most of the individuals were unarmed. Um, and Jack Lacey has been silent as he has not come forward and weighed in on any of those cases. At this time, the, the uproar and the righteous indignation that is in the black community is tantamount uh, to us not standing behind her. Uh, in this election that will be coming up in November. Uh, there's an outcry of so many different organizations who have come collectively together to say that no more is this acceptable. Uh, no more will we sit idly by and allow this individual to not do her job. So we're gonna, we're gonna come together and we're gonna solidify this chant, this call, uh, this drumbeat that is getting louder on a daily basis, that she be removed from office for she's shown under her tenure that she does not have the wherewithal to do the job of district attorney. And we would no longer allow her to sit idly by, not doing what she is paid to do and not doing what she was elected to do. So having said that, we're going to do everything that we can in our power to see that she is not re-elected district attorney. She is accountable to those who, who were responsible for her being in the very position that she's in today and for her to turn her back on all of those individuals uh, is, is truly, is truly an act of, uh, a, a very egregious act and one that would not be tolerated. Um, what, we, what we're saying is this, we have the ability, we had the ability to, to put you in office, but we also have the ability to not put you back into office. So we're gonna be getting out the uh, information concerning her tenure and the lack of her responses to, to some very serious issues. We're going to educate the public on what she has not done, and we're also going to educate, educate the public on what she should have done uh, in many of those cases, even when facts were given uh, by both the coroner of uh, the police commission in the case of Ezell Ford, that uh, police officers were derelict in their duties. She has yet to prosecute one police officer. This is systemic. Uh, throughout this country. Uh, we recall just, just recently <coughs> in Chicago, uh, there was a video that uh, the Chicago Police Department, uh, the District Attorney's Office in Chicago, as well as the mayor suppressed. Uh, but once it came out under the Freedom of Information Act, we saw in that video a young man who the police had said in their report before the video actually surfaced uh, they felt threatened in that he was moving towards them. Uh, he supposedly had a knife in his hand. But the video shows him walking away from the police officers. And he was literally shot 15 times in the back. Uh, even after he had fell to the pavement 
Uh, the officer continued to empty his gun, and I think shot him eight more times. Uh, what was found is that the knife that he had was folded. Uh, it wasn't open. He didn't make any threatening moves toward the uh, police officers. Now, having said that, it also came out that the district attorney of that, uh, of that city knew about this video, the mayor, and of course the police chief of that city. Uh, there's been other cases throughout the country. You made allusion to Ferguson, but then we have cases in, in New York. We have cases in South Carolina. We have cases in every creek, crevice, and cranny throughout this country. So this is not just a L.A. problem. It's not just a Ferguson problem. It's not just a Chicago problem. It's not just a New York problem. But it's an American problem. And until people come to an understanding that our lives matter, speaking of black lives, and people of, of of a low income status lives matter, then this problem is going to continue to uh, subsist. Uh, we say right now, and we continue to uh, hit the mantle, uh, draw attention to these very uh, incomprehensible acts that continue to just manifest themselves literally on a daily basis throughout this country, that uh, there needs to be an outcry of individuals of like mindedness to say that uh, this is unacceptable. And we would not sit idly by and continue to watch individuals, uh, but enjoy those individuals unarmed and not threatening. If, if, if anything, I, I, I think she's been a staunch opponent um, to Black Lives Matter. Uh, uh, organization has literally given a voice uh, to the many unjustified shootings and killings, not just in LA, but around the country. Uh, a voice that is sorely and badly needed at this particular time. And I think that the work they do is, is, is beyond belief. As a matter of fact, we at LA can work very closely with our dear sister Marlene Abdullah, Black Lives Matter LA. And uh, we come together collectively uh, often uh, to fight back against the systemic racism that is inherent in, in, in the community of, of those of African descent not just here in the city of LA and this state, but throughout the country. So it's a very needed voice. It's a very needed presence uh, at this particular moment in time in our history in this country. And uh, getting back to your question about uh, concerning Jackie Lacey, uh, she has been one that uh, has not spoken uh, highly about Black Lives Matter, uh, as to the contrary as many police organizations and uh, district attorney's offices throughout this country, they have been avowed against what uh, Black Lives Matter stands for. We're actually going to be uh, that wall, hopefully, that prevents her from, from being elected a second time.